Hi, let's talk about how to use the grinding lathe. This is a Merker lathe, um, and it's primarily used for engraving. Um, but we use it in the glass blowing world oftentimes for removing punties that protrude from the bottom a little bit too much. So this was, uh, on my part, a failed attempt to uh, torch a punny and push it in. I didn't push in enough because the bottom is too thick. So now I'm gonna grind this away. Using these wheels, which are called spherical miracle wheels. Uh, they're available from several suppliers, but His Glass Works is the, the main place that you get them from in the United States. So a couple of things about this. The radius of this is theoretically the same this way as this radius here is this way. So if you imagine a sphere and the center is just sliced out of it, that's what one of these wheels is. They're designed that way so it doesn't matter which way that you turn this thing, it'll grind a perfect semicircle into the surface of it. And that way you can go through all the grit all the way to polish and it's all the wheels will fit inside of the previous gr uh, groove. That way I can end up with a, a, a lens carved into the bottom of this that's perfectly polished. So let's talk about some safety stuff as always first, then we'll talk about setting up the machine, taking it apart, and then we'll talk about uh, some of the, the particulars of actually using it. So let's talk about safety with the Merker lathe. I don't have any rings on, no dangly jewelry, uh, no long sleeves, and my hair, if I had long hair, all my long hair would be back. Nothing here, like no straps or tassels or anything. Like I'm not, I don't have my, my apron tied around the front. I don't want anything that could by any chance get caught in this wheel. It's a very powerful machine. You don't want anything caught in this when it's spinning. Safety glasses at all times. If something gets sucked out of your hand and falls into the bin, cut off the machine before you go fishing after it. If the arbor starts to shift and come out, don't try to grab it. Turn off the machine, step back, let it fall into the bin, and then pick it up and start over. The first thing I need to do is attach the arbor to the shaft. So you can see here that this arbor has one singular hole in it and the shaft has one singular groove in it. I am going to try to line those two things up like this so that the hole and the groove is lined up and I'm just going to jam them in by hand. I will know if I've missed because two things can happen. The first thing is that the shaft will wobble or the arbor will wobble in the shaft and the second is that if I didn't jam it incorrectly as I'm working very often the arbor will loosen itself and slide out and fall down. So that's how I put him that's why I put it together. Taking it apart is really really simple. I have this pin here. The round part of this faces the machine. There's a little sign here. Put that in there have a little wooden hammer. I'm going to always hold on to the arbor. Really important. I don't want to hit this and shoot this across the room because if this gets bent, it's several hundred dollars for a new arbor. Light tap and it comes right out. So again, little hole lines up with the little groove here. Make sure they're perfectly lined up and then jam them in and here is what it should look like after that. Taking it apart, take that pin, put it in here, hold on to the shaft, light tap comes right out. So that's setting it all up. So now let's talk about speed and turning it on. For our piece of equipment, we have installed, sort of retrofit, this um, 
variable speed adjuster here. Inside of this piece of equipment, which we're never gonna really go in and mess with anymore, inside of this is a bunch of pulleys and the opposite sheep on the bottom and a belt. They're all color coded and ideally back in the day, you would have adjusted those belts to change the speed just like on a drill press. However, instead we have a variable speed motor adjuster here. It just dials it up and down. So that's what we're gonna use for our purposes today. We're just gonna keep that set vertical and that's gonna run at the speed that we want to. Putting on the wheels. This is all hand tight stuff. I don't need any wrenches out here. But you will notice that all the wheels are marked out on one side. That is because as this is spinning in one particular direction, it's actually chipping the diamonds that are embedded in the surface of this wheel. And they're chipping them in a particular orientation. If I flip that wheel around, now it's running in the opposite way. Those diamonds that are really, really sharp could dig in to the glass and get pulled out of the metal matrix that they're in. So I want to keep it consistent. I don't want them to chip unevenly and grind unevenly. So now, I mean, there might be a, a better practice somewhere of doing this a little differently, but that's how I've been uh, running them for years. So start at the coarsest grit, run it out. That slides on, put on my nut, and then here is how I'm gonna tighten it. I'm gonna take one finger and put it around the nut like this. The other part of my hand is gonna grab the wheel itself and righty tighty, I'm just gonna hand tight like that. Now the way this wheel runs, it spins this way toward me and so it's gonna, it's going to force tighten this thing even more. So I don't need to uh, tighten it with a, with a wrench because it's gonna help tighten itself as it's running. Taking it off is just the opposite. I take my finger, put it around that nut like so, grab the wheel with my other uh, part of my hand, my, my thumb, pull back, and it just loosens right up. So that's putting it on and taking it off. Shouldn't need any more than that for it to tighten up. Now let's talk about water and setting up the water. Like any of the other tools that we use in glass, we want water on our tool. I am going to adjust this, turn on the water at the wall. Ideally, you shouldn't need to adjust the water here if it's set already. Uh, but sometimes you need a little bit more, a little bit less, whatever, so you can adjust it here. I like to get it set, leave it, and then adjust, and, and then I only have to turn it on and off at the wall. I'm gonna press my run button. You'll hear it slowly start up. Now, how much water? I should be able to put my hand in front of it and barely feel any drips. But if I put my hand under it, get a lot. Almost nothing, a lot. The way this tool is designed to be used is actually for engraving through sheet glass where you have a pattern drawn. You look through it like this and then you carve it. So it's designed to be right, right here and you should just have a little bit of water there but it shouldn't be so much that I'm getting soaked, okay? So that's the first thing. So make sure I got my water and stuff. I got my uh, apron on because it is gonna be kind of splashy. So there's a couple of different ways you can start to grind this. A lot of people will hold it like this and run it. I like to hold it Make sure it's wet enough. I like to hold it like this and look right down. Because I think that when I do that, I'm a lot better at hitting center. And that's how it's designed to be used. Look through it. Now obviously if it's an opaque piece of glass, I can't do that. And then I've got to approach it like this. but I find it's much easier to slip and miss like I just did and hit another part of the bottom. 
one trick you can do to keep this from scratching the rest of the glass is to cover a circular area of this with electrical tape. Electrical tape works great for if you slip like I just did, not uh, scratching. So I have a little scratch there now I'll have to take out later. So I just went and I dried it off real quick just so you could see where I've missed and I've bumped the sides with um, the rest with this wheel. So I'm probably, that, that means that in those areas, I'm gonna have to grind those areas as well. So ideally here, probably what I should do is make a bigger lens and continue moving through the grits and grinding. And that means that instead of having a circle this size, I'll end up with a circle that's the full area of wherever I've touched. So let's talk about uh, how I would move through the grits, what some of the other ones of these things do, and then we'll be done. Safety, once I press the stop button, I'm not gonna touch this thing until it's fully stopped turning, okay? Fully. Now, because these are metal, uh, I don't really need to air dry them, but if I did, I could just move the water out the way and as they're, they will just spin dry pretty quickly, waiting for it to stop turning. That's probably plenty dry enough. And as soon as it stops turning fully, then I can take this wheel off. But this is uh, very dangerous to try to touch this while it's spinning. Again, finger around one side, hand grips the rest, pull down, unloosens. Don't need a wrench. Slide the wheel off, put it back where it was, move on. I'll move up to the next one. 60, 100, 180, 360, go in that order. Um, just like um, working on a flat surface, one of my best friends here is going to be the handy dandy Sharpie. I will take my Sharpie, I will mark all those areas that I have ground, trying to stay right on the, the ground areas and not move about. So now when I move on, once I have removed all that Sharpie, probably twice, I'll probably do it, wash it, dry it, Sharpie it, and do it again, then I know that I have fully removed the previous grit and I'm not gonna get a really scratchy surface. So let's see what that looks like. You can see the Sharpie getting worn away. But where I have it touched, Where I haven't touched there is still Sharpie. So there you go. You can see I've got that surface. Now I am going to Sharpie it up again. Remove it, dry it, Sharpie it up, move on to the next grip. And eventually, I'll have a nice symmetrical lens in the bottom of this that you won't even know was there. So, so that's these wheels, which are the spherical miracle wheels. We go through four of those up to 360 and then we have a 600 smoothing wheel, uh, which is uh, on a plastic matrix, plastic substrate. And this smoothing, this one has kind of been damaged but it still works, believe it or not. Uh, so this smoothing wheel, all those run with water like this. What doesn't happen, what doesn't run with the, with the water feed is when we get to the final felt wheel, which is the final polish. So the 600 is pre-polished and this is the final polish. So let's talk about using this. I'm gonna turn the water off, move it out the way. It says, uh, this says right, which means out. It should say out. No water feed used with washers. That's because if you look at this, this is wobbly on here, okay? I can't use it like that because it'll wobble around. So we have some washers designed for this. We put one on, put the other one on, 
put the washer on the outside, hand tighten the same way, okay? Now this wheel has been so used with, with cerium for so long that even me touching it is putting cerium on my hands. So, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna turn the water on enough to wet it, okay? That's all I wanna do is I just want that water just to wet the surface. You can see the, the surface is changing color. Turn off the water, move it to one side. Now, when I touch it, look, there's milky cereal on my hands. This wheel is so impregnated that now I can just use this and, and go ahead and polish. And it's made to fit into the same space. The, only, the reason why we're not using a water feed with this wheel is simple. We don't want the wheel to become saturated with water because then we're gonna have to air dry it thoroughly, okay? If it's just wet on the surface, let it air dry a little bit, you know, clean your piece off, go and dry it off, whatever, come back, turn it off, and then we can hang it up. As you can see, even with being cautious like that, it's still not fully round. It's sort of bumpy. And that is really simply because if this absorbs water, and in fact, you can sort of see this, this side is thinner than this side. If you look at it, you can see that the bottom is thicker than the top. That's <clears throat> visual evidence that this was really wet and sat here like this. And when it did that, all the water drained down and this side expanded more. So that's why we don't wanna saturate it with water. We're just gonna add water to keep it damp, add a little bit of cerium to our object to keep it, um, to keep cerium on there. And that's how we're gonna polish it. But we don't wanna saturate it with water. We don't wanna run it with the water feed because it will fully soak into the felt It'll expand it and dry unevenly, and then we'll end up with a football. It's really hard to work because you're gonna be like this, and it's really, really kind of dangerous actually to work on that. So again, when we're done, water turns off at the wall. You don't, shouldn't have to adjust it there. It's off the wall. Take my pin. This goes back up here. Under no circumstances am I putting this back on the wall with one of my wheels on there, because any water that's left in between the wheel and the arbor will rust it, and I'm never ever leaving my arbor in here. Even if I'm just gonna go grab some dinner, I'm taking it out and putting it back. I don't want water rusting the arbor inside of the shaft because it makes it really difficult to get a good fit. It makes it not wanna be straight, and it makes it wanna not come back out. So those are all the things that you need to know for right now for just basic use of the Merker lathe. We've simplified it so we don't have to adjust the speeds other than uh, this little dial thing, but for none of these do we really need to worry about that because these are all the same size wheels so we can just run them roughly at the same speed. The only one you need to watch for in terms of cracking glass is this one. This will generate a lot of friction and it will heat up your glass so make sure that your wheel is still damp, that when I touch it, it's gonna leave a little bit of residue of cereal. You will know right away when you're polishing whether or not you have done all the previous steps thoroughly because the cereal will embed in any little tiny micro imperfections and it'll be really difficult to come out. And so when you go to look at it and wash it off and clean it, you'll be like, oh, there's all this white stuff in there. If there's white stuff embedded in the orange peel, that's 100% because you haven't gone through these steps and removed them enough. Remember, I usually put on Sharpie and remove it at least twice with each wheel to make sure I've thoroughly removed the previous step. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.